competition video. So today I'm going to go through my predictions for IGCSE 0607 Mathematics Paper 4. Yep, that's the big one. It's worth 60% of your total grade. Uh, before we watch this video, please check out my Paper 2 prediction video because a lot of what I'm going to say is impacted from what I've already said on the Paper 2 video. Okay, hope you enjoy it and hope you get a lot out of it. Okay, and what you've been waiting for, which is my predictions for the Paper 4 May 2021. Well, actually, it's going to be in April, right at the end of April. So, as you can see here, the almost certain category is actually quite big. So, there are many topics that you can actually see that are going to come up very, very often. Before I start, please like and please subscribe. It goes a long way to helping the channel grow. Right, let's get started. So, GDC skills is the first thing that you need to be aware of. That is, sketching functions, finding critical points, that's maxima, minima, uh, roots, for example, as well. Um, also finding ranges of answers. What a lot of my pupils find difficult is when it's got an inequality involved and you have to read off a certain set of answers between a particular domain. So make sure you can do that as well. As you can see, it's a whopping 18 in 12 papers. That is 1.5 questions per paper because often there are two questions. And I've even separated regression lines into a uh, separate topic. So keep that in mind. Second is percentage calculations. These are generally pretty similar year on year. There is some percentage change, percentage increase, decrease, uh, reverse percentage change, so working backwards to work out the original amount, compound interest question, which the really straightforward questions, just three easy marks, and sometimes what I like to call reverse compound interest. So you need to use some kind of trial and error method or logs to work out the number of years given a particular interest rate that you have. Again, a whopping 14 in 12 papers comes up every year. Make sure you know it. Number three, transformations. Now, the question style can differ. So sometimes it's a straightforward reflect this, rotate this, enlarge this, stretch this. Make sure you've done stretches as well and translate this. Sometimes they will get you to describe the transformation. So how do I go from A to C or A to B, for example? Um, also, I've noticed is they've also put on inverse transformations. So they'll give you a transformation, and without any graphs, you need to think, okay, how do I work backwards to get to the original shape? So if you enlarge by scale factor 2, then to go back, you need to enlarge by scale factor a half, for example. Uh, my next topic is statistics. Be aware there are no more histograms on the course, so probably there is more likelihood there will be a cumulative frequency question instead. Uh, know how to work out the estimate of the mean, averages and quartiles using your GDC. That is a good time saver for you in the exam. Again, comes up 12 and 12 papers. Sine cosine rule in some way, often combined with bearings, occasionally with vectors as well. Um, includes working out the area of a triangle, so make sure that you know that and know how to work with the sine cosine rule, including the angle version. You may need to learn that off by heart. Probability, again, 12 and 12 papers. Uh, this can vary again, so tree diagram questions are fairly common, occasionally two-way tables. Um, they're often linked to other questions, so you'll find often the probability section comes after a Venn diagram question or a statistics question. So keep that in mind. It may not be a complete question. And I do put this in my almost certain category. Um, often comes up on the paper too as well, maybe in a small way. Uh, something to do with functions. So composite, inverse functions, so working out f of g of x, working out f inverse of x, for example, solving equations with functions, so f of x equals 11, and then working out, say, 2x plus 7 equals 11, and algebraic fractions, they often tie that in as well at the harder end. And there is an extra section to my almost certain um, part of this video, so make sure you watch all the way through, otherwise you're going to miss out on this as well. This would also go into my almost certain category, which is volume and surface area of 3D shapes. It has become um, much more on the papers in the last couple of years, so make sure you can work out the surface area of a pyramid, surface area of a cone, volume of a cone, and so on. Sometimes combined with similarity as well, working with area and volume scale factors. So you can see, if you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight topics, you're going to be covering, I would say, 60, 70% of the paper.
Yes, that much. And if you look at my previous prediction video, about 90% of what I said came up. So make sure you take note of the almost certain category. We have that often category as well, which again, about 50%. So you do need to know these topics as well. Uh, regression lines does come up from year to year. Not every time, but again, these are easy marks if you know your GDC, your graphical display calculator. Um, they'll often ask you to plot points on a scatter graph given. Generally, they won't get you to draw one from scratch. That generally doesn't happen, but they might get you to plot a couple of points. Uh, linked in with statistics, they may get you to work out means, medians, for example, as well, possibly, and then work out regression lines and using that regression line with some simple substitution. Equations and inequalities, what's interesting is I would say there's an equal chance of it coming up on paper two or paper four. It's really one of those topics they could put on either. So if it doesn't come up on paper two, for example, you can be pretty sure it's going to come up on paper four. So when you do your paper two, there's only a couple of days in between, really note down those topics that have appeared, and then they're less likely to appear on the next paper. Occasionally they're written problems, so they'll write it out in written format, and you'll need to find the simultaneous equation, for example. Uh, sequences comes up reasonably often. Um, linear, quadratic, and cubic, you need to know how to work out the nth term of those sequences. Often the last sub-question, the last part of the question, requires a combination of the nth terms of the past three parts. So you might need to add them together or minus them. So keep that in mind. And a nice hint for you, if sequences does not come up on paper two or paper four, very likely your investigation is going to be a sequences investigation. It's a very common investigation they use. So again, use the papers that you've seen before. That will guide you for what's likely to come. And lastly, Venn diagrams. Know your set notation, often linked with probability two. So make sure you know intersection, union, um, prime notation, for example. And again, reasonably be sure to appear on either paper two or paper four. Again, it's one of those topics that goes between the papers alongside equations and inequalities. And the sometimes category, uh, vectors hasn't been a particularly popular big topic in the last couple of years. Maybe it will make a comeback this year. Uh, often combined with coordinate geometry, which generally sticks to a paper two. And I've mentioned circle theorems and variation. They've both been far more common on a paper two. But say you do your paper two and you find either of these topics are not on your paper two, then the probability increases that they're going to be on your paper four instead. So that is my section there. So I'll go back to my original slide. This is probably the most important slide. Take a screenshot. Please share with your friends as well. These are the topics you need to revise. If you know these topics, this will give you a good 60, 70% of the paper if you know them well. Right, I'm going to stop there. Again, please like and subscribe. Um, paper six, I probably will not do a prediction video for because it's slightly harder to predict exactly what's going to appear. But again, please look at my video on paper six, hit six hints and tips. That will give you a good guide on exactly how to go about this paper. Right, good luck in your exams and hopefully they all go well. All right, bye bye for now.